Hi there. So if you click on this video, most likely you're interested in the whole hype about waking at 5 a.m. in the morning. You've seen those YouTube challenges, 30 days trying to wake up at 5 a.m. and so on, and, and people basically giving up after the challenges. So today I will be sharing with you the 10 things I've learned uh, over the year and a half that I've implemented this into my life as well as some helpful tips tools and books you might want to read in order to further educate yourself before making the jump into uh, into waking up early so before we begin uh I would love if you would click on that subscribe button. It really makes a difference for me to continue making these videos. So yeah, let's jump into it. I would assume that most likely you are right now where I was a year and a half ago. I consider myself a night a night owl and uh, pretty much it seemed inhumane uh, to wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning, especially if you combine that with some kind of sports. And I always wonder actually how people did it. But maybe that's the first thing I actually learned uh, from implementing this is that I am actually not a night owl. And uh, I can honestly say right now that I feel much better with this changed um, schedule as well as I do require a lot less sleep now and caffeine to stay awake during the day. And just to mention this, if you still don't know, uh, the transition is actually really hard. Even though I did it uh, slowly with one hour increments uh, over a couple of days, uh, basically the experience to switch to this is having constant jet lag, uh, for two, three weeks. <laughs> so be prepared for that. Next thing I learned was that actually the 5 a.m. thing is not the most important in this schedule. Why 5 a.m. was chosen? 5 a.m. was chosen because most people have a nine to five job. And actually the point is to have enough time on your own before you start work for the important things in your life. Doesn't matter what they are, if it's a hobby, if you're trying to um, uh, make a side hustle or you're trying to develop a new skill or just spend time with your family uh, it, That's the main point that you need to have your own time before your regular Monday uh, Tasks so that what that means is if you start work later You can always adapt your schedule and you don't need to wake up at 5 a.m. In the morning You just need to calculate when do you need to wake up to have enough time before work for the things that are important to you uh, Let's say you start work at uh, 12 o'clock, you don't need to wake up at 5 a.m., you, you need to wake up at 8 a.m. The point is that you don't need to deprive yourself from that super important a minimum of eight hours sleep per night in order to be uh, efficient and in order to have enough time. You just need to uh, switch up a little bit your schedule and fit it according to the tasks that you can cannot change, like your working time, for example. So let's get into the benefits I've seen from implementing this into my schedule. First is uh, the mental benefits. Uh, my job revolves around working with a lot of people, deadlines, stress. I think you can relate here uh, to that because mo most jobs are like that. So I cannot stress enough how important it is to have the first hours of the day just for me. Uh, and how it impacts my mental health uh, because when you start your day doing the things that are important to you in your personal life uh, doing the things you like enjoy have a, some peace and quiet uh, this definitely makes the rest of the day much easier and it does help you withstand more stress and at the end of the day it makes uh, when you look back on your day you feel much happier. I'm going to give you two examples on schedules. I think you will at least relate to one of them right now. And you can decide for yourself which one do you want to have in your life. So let's start with day one. You wake up 30 minutes before you have to leave to work. You just hurry up, brush your teeth, grab some clothes, and you're outside of the door. You're stuck at least an hour in traffic, battling to get in time for that important meeting 
and you get to your desk you're still not fully woken up because you only uh, you only had time for half a cup of coffee didn't even taste good because you forgot to buy sugar and you didn't have any time to go to the shop for that the rest of your day continues negatively like that you start to work your brain is still working slowly but your work tasks and colleagues just keep coming and coming and coming and at some point this will make you crumble this might lead to burnout when you get back home from work you are feeling really tired because of all of that emotional drain during the day that stress of running around when you look back the day kind of sucks you you lack motivation to do anything productive so you just sit in front of netflix and chill so now let's go to day number two you wake up four hours before you start working the first hour you have just for coffee some relaxing music maybe pick up a, a nice book that you want to read doesn't matter if it's uh, fiction or uh, something you you want to learn and yes reading not scrolling through your facebook or youtube feed try to avoid social media in, in the morning you combine this with a nice nutritious breakfast as well and read for the next 40 uh, 50 minutes after that you have 30 to 50 minutes for some morning exercises it doesn't matter if it's jogging yoga or just some free weights training whatever fits your sport needs and whatever you like doing then a 10 minute shower and then you have two hours where where you're completely woken up fresh your brain is open is working at full capacity where you can focus on things that you prioritize in your life whether that's learning something new to further develop your career uh, taking online courses taking courses in general enjoy a hobby spend time with your family doesn't matter you have those two hours to focus on the things that make you happy to get off your day in a really better mood so day one was my day schedule for years <laughs> And to be fair, I felt really, really crappy from that. And once I switched to this new schedule, things definitely changed more for the positive. It's hard to maintain such a schedule. Also, a thing is that you won't most likely have to keep it that strict when you implement a 5 a.m. routine, for example, that you have to do this every single day. No, things happen, life happens. You cannot always uh, do that. Sometimes you need to stay late. Sometimes you're sick and you need to sleep in. It's not a problem, but trust me, when things are normal, even if you get three out of seven days like this, it's really worth it. The more days you get, uh, the better for you because your body adjusts to this schedule. Let's move on to the health benefits. We've talked about mental health, now it's general health uh, for your body. Going through the, those examples I gave uh, for the day, for the mornings, I gave an example about sports. So um, we've all been there after a hard day at work, uh, basically you lack the motivation to go to the gym to go for a jog or whatever but when you have enough time in the morning when you're fully rested before work to spend 30 to 50 minutes training uh, it's much easier to overcome that lump because you only need to fight uh, what's in your head at that moment and uh, from my experience uh, overcoming my lack of enthusiasm in general for doing sports in the morning is much easier than uh, than doing that after work uh, because after work I also have to fight my physical tiredness it usually takes me five to ten minutes uh, well I would say five minutes during my warm-up uh, to get over that hump uh, motivational hump so, so to say and start enjoying the, the morning workout also morning workouts combined with a uh, quick shower after that definitely helps a lot in waking up your body because you're raising your pulse more oxygen is getting into your blood and your brain as well as well as the re refreshing water from the shower also helps a lot another health benefit is taking advantage of the time between 10 o'clock and midnight um, I know this won't fit for everyone that's, uh, that want to uh, implement an early rising schedule. Uh, for my 5 a.m. wake up time, it does help a lot. Uh, bef before I implemented this, I, I needed 11 hours of sleep in order to feel a little bit rested. Now I've down that to eight hours. That's mainly because I take advantage of those 
two to three hours that are usually better for sleeping due to your uh, internal clock. I don't know how to put it uh, in other words. Usually your body is adjusted to the day-night cycle, although where I live in Germany it's a bit hard because during the summer the sun still hasn't set uh, when I'm going to bed and when, uh, when I wake up during the winter it's dark for the next two hours or three uh, so sometimes this is a bit tough but you can actually train your body uh, by introducing light that are simulating daylight as well as when it's still um, sunny outside uh, and you have to go to bed uh, just use shades and make the room darker moving on to personal benefits uh, i'm talking about those two three hours uh, personally for me I've picked up reading again because before that I couldn't find the time to do that. Uh, also, after eight hours uh, sitting in front of screens, honestly, my eyes are too tired to, to read. So reading in the morning does help a lot in progressing with the books. I have a ton of books I want to read. I did have enough time for taking uh, online courses to further develop myself. I also have enough time for my side gigs. On the occasions uh, when my wife wakes up also early, uh, we do have uh, time to spend together in the morning, which is usually hard uh, to find in, uh, in most uh, situations, especially when your working schedules are uh, not the same. As well as I became more consistent in setting and achieving goals, because one of the things I usually do is uh, scheduling uh, things. So I don't just have free time and not knowing what to do. Basically defeats the entire purpose of having those four hours. If you haven't planned what to do with them, if you don't know what to do, if you're just sitting around uh, watching Netflix in the morning or scrolling through social media, trust me, that will, won't change a thing in your life. You can't achieve any changes in your schedule that are like this without the following thing. You most likely guessed it because I've mentioned it already a couple of times indirectly uh, in this video and that's sports. Doing sports is really, really important, especially if your job revolves around si sitting uh, on the desk the entire day. This is going to kill you at some point uh, internally. You will be so sleepy especially during the change to the new schedule. So what I found the most helpful is activity. Uh, if you cannot spare half an hour to do a quick workout during the day, just take a 10 minute walk, go outside, get some fresh air, get moving. Getting that oxygen into your brain is really important for staying awake. Also, it does, do, doing sports is proven beneficial for your long-term implementation of, of such a schedule uh, due to the, the fact that you start getting better sleep at night, uh, you take out stress, a lot of stress, uh, is uh, taken out uh, by doing sports. Next thing I learned is that it's super important to track your sleep. It's not so important how much you sleep, but how good you sleep. Uh, I did get a smartwatch that's tracking my sleep and uh, I did get a lot of data. What helped a lot was calculating my REM cycles. For example, even if you have around five hours of sleep, if you wake up at the right time, you will feel much better if, uh, compared to having 11 hours of sleep and waking up at the worst time. Trust me, I've experimented with this a lot to find the perfect uh, combination for me. It's really important to know yourself, to track your REM cycles so you can plan when to wake up. Also. Forget about the snooze button. That doesn't help at all. Those extra 15 or uh, 30 minutes you think you get of sleep in the morning, you actually don't get them. Your body is functional. So the only thing is that you're doing is wasting time. You won't feel more rested. Actually, you might even feel worse. Biggest fear I've had was missing out on important things. But the, the actual truth is you figure out once you have such a schedule, what is important to you? There are three outcomes when it comes to decision if something is important or not. First is, it's important and you will find time in the day for it. Second, it's super important. You can, uh, it's not possible to find time during your normal day in a schedule. It is worth staying late, for example, and suffering for the next week trying to get back to your schedule. 
and believe me you will be suffering when you when you get out of your schedule even if you get enough sleep like you go to bed late and you still plan the eight hours of sleep the next day you will feel like crap trust me and you will feel like that until you get back into your sweet spot schedule and the third one it's actually not worth it after a while you're going to see how many activities are actually not worth suffering for you will just have to skip on them because they're you can do so much with the time you're giving given in a day and one of the biggest truths that no one sees when they read about successful people wake up at 5 a.m. They are not depriving themselves of sleep. It's not the fact that they wake up at 5 a.m. that makes them successful. What makes them successful is prioritization. If, if you take time from your sleep, which is super important, in order to do something not so relevant, just like hanging out or going to a club or something, this will affect your priorities. This will affect the performance where you need actual performance in order to satisfy yourself in terms of um, achievements, progress, or even when it comes to just having family time. Yeah, you will figure this out sooner or later, what, what, what is worth it and what not. But from my experience, around 80% of the activities that I had that uh, I did usually after my current uh, bedtime Bedtime sounds weird, I feel like a kid. Yeah, okay, that, uh, my current time that I go to bed. Anyways, all of those activities, like 80% of them are not worth suffering for. They were just filling my time and not making me happy, not making me productive in any way. Next thing I've learned is that creating a morning ritual is really important in tricking your brain into looking forward to waking up because let's face it, most of us are kind of lazy. So if you start your day with something that you really enjoy and makes you relax and so on, this will tr trick your brain to look forward to it. For me, what did the trick is this uh, morning cup of coffee, the um, music that I put on, like some nice relaxing jazz, a nice book, as well as the exercise. While I do not like the process of doing the exercise, but I do like the feeling after that. So I try to focus on that in the morning because uh, I do feel a lot more fresh after that. And so. Um, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, it takes about 5 to 10 minutes to get over that motivation hump for, the, for exercising in the morning. Also, another thing I do is try to spend 10 to 15 minutes scheduling my day. I usually do that over the weekend for the entire week, but I quickly go through the current day in the morning just to check if something needs to be changed because life happens. You cannot do this today because you have something more, uh, imp more important, priorities change. It's good to be flexible. This is also part of my morning routine. I usually do this as soon as I wake up and have the cup of coffee ready. Small tip here, you can actually implement morning routines with your Alexa, which is really cool. Uh, I recently started using Alexa and I have this morning routine when I say good morning Alexa and just checking that my Alexa won't turn on. She starts um, going through my schedule, telling me what I have for the day, telling me uh, what's the weather like, traffic, uh, important information for me. And after that five minute briefing, she starts playing some uh, smooth jazz from my Spotify account. The next thing is actually even more important than the morning rituals and that are, that's the evening rituals. And why are they more, more important? Because our, our bodies are kind of dumb and if you don't start winding down in time your body is going to go into emergency mode it's going to create a lot of adrenaline that will keep you awake i don't know if you've noticed this but usually when you're past your usual time when you go to bed uh, somehow after an hour your tiredness goes away that that's because your body is, is thinking okay we're still awake something is wrong we need to produce some adrenaline here to keep us alive the problem is screens in any kind like tvs watching a movie playing video games smartphones social media everything from that is stimulating your brain which keeps your body producing all those hormones keeping you awake biggest point here is 
try to avoid screens the last hour of, of your day. What I have done is I set this wind down period on my phone where it one hour before bed it uh, just turns uh, black and white and it uh, basically mutes all of the notifications on all of my apps and uh, un unless you're in my uh, short list of contacts you cannot actually call me then you have an hour to just wind down whether it's again uh, continuing uh, reading or maybe focusing on something more lighter than what you did in the morning or nothing too technical so you don't have to uh, overwork your brain or just meditate listen to an audiobook that also works by the way i'm going to leave an amazon link for a free trial from audible for audiobooks if you're interested check it out it's a 30-day trial so i will be leaving links down below in the description about some helpful tools apps uh, and books some of them are uh, so for example my Samsung smartwatch does a really good job combined with uh, the Samsung S Health app. Uh, I get pretty much decent information regarding my sleep. There are two books that I really recommend. One is Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker and the other is The 5 AM Miracle by Jeff Sanders. I also recommend uh, you, if you don't have, getting yourself an Alexa and uh, letting her help you with your morning ritual. You can also do that, I think, with every um, assistant like the Google Assistant as well or even the, the crappy Bixby from Samsung. Final thoughts and tips here. As I've mentioned this throughout the video, 5 a.m. is not the goal. The goal is to have time for yourself and to feel better. If 5 a.m. is what, what you need for your schedule, it's 5 a.m. If it's 11, it's 11. Doesn't, doesn't matter as long as you make it work for yourself. Experiment. I know it's going to be hard and crappy uh, in the beginning, but it's going to benefit at the end. Think about the long, long run. Yeah, of course, remember always that you will inevitably fail but that shouldn't stop you because that's life you just continue and try to do the best you can some helpful tips how to overcome some of the uh, situations first is give yourself an extra REM cycle of sleep over the weekends uh, you don't need to wake up at 5 a.m in the weekends uh, why not add an hour and a half more sleep just uh, so, so you would be more rested over the weekends. Avoid overeating because that makes you sleepy, especially at lunch. Try to eat as little as possible. You can implement an afternoon snack, make it a healthy one though, uh, in order to um, combat this um, overeating problem and uh, afternoon crash of energy. When making the transition, try to do it as smooth as possible. If you're waking up at 9 or 10 a.m. right now and you want to wake up at 5 a.m., don't start directly waking up at 5 a.m. because this will have its uh, health problems. Uh, the f even by doing one hour increments, uh, I did feel dizzy and sick some of the days uh, when I meant, uh, as I said, it's basically a permanent jet lag until your body adjusts to the new schedule. The goal at the end, as I said, is to find a schedule that fits your needs, but also makes you feel better. And again, I cannot stress this enough. Do not be afraid to fail. Do not be afraid not to be perfect in this. Life is not a constant thing. Things change, you need to adapt, so do not be afraid to, to change up your schedule for a day or two or three when needed. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, leave, uh, click on that thumbs up. Uh, let me know down in the comments what are your thoughts about the topic. Are you going to implement this into your life as well as is 5 a.m. for uh, fitting your schedule or would you rather have another time? Thanks for watching and I would love to see you on my other videos. So don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the notification icon to get notifications. And I would love to interact as much as possible with everyone. So leave comments down below the video. You can always find me on my Instagram, martivonov91, or just browse my other socials. I'll be leaving links to all of them down in the description as usual. See you soon, guys. Bye.